Hi viewers, hope you all are doing good. In this explanatory video series, we are going to see about electric propulsion in general and Hall effect thrusters in particular. With the launch of GSAT-9, also known as South Asian Satellite, Indian Space Research Organization has successfully completed the promise of Indian Prime Minister, that is to offer an Indian-built communication satellite to its neighbors as a friendly gift. But this mission was also a technology demonstrator for India's first electric propulsion system. The subsequent GSAT-18 mission launched using GSLV Mark III also used a electric propulsion system. By doing this, Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO propelled India into an elite league of nations that have used an electric propulsion spacecraft weighing two or more tons. So what's the big deal? Even though this technology was first used in 1964, only four other countries namely the United States, Russia, Japan and China have used an electric propulsion system in a satellite weighing two or more tons. The main advantage is, by using electric propulsion, the spacecraft's weight can be considerably reduced and also would cost less. According to ISRO's Director of Satellite Center, Dr. Anna Durai, a satellite weighing 5 tons with current technology would weigh less than 4 tons using electric propulsion, that is, more than 20% reduction in weight. Considering that the cost of putting 1 ton of object in low earth orbit is 4 million dollars or 2 micro rupees, using electric propulsion would result in huge cost saving. This shoe seems to be an important technology. To understand this technology, let us start from basics of how rocket works. As the rocket are very heavy and are launched against the force of gravity, enormous force or thrust is needed. In a normal rocket, fuel or propellant is pressurized and ignited and then pushed out. This action of propellant moving out causes a reactional force that pushes the spacecraft in other direction. This can be better understood by the following example. Consider a person standing on a skateboard with a number of tennis balls. Now, if he starts throwing the ball, the skateboard will move in opposite direction. With each ball thrown, the skateboard's velocity will increase. Here, the man throwing tennis ball is equivalent to the rocket engine ejecting hot propellants. Both causes the body to move in opposite direction. Now, to reach a specific velocity, the person can throw many tennis balls at slower speed or fewer tennis balls at faster speed. Thus, we see that if he can throw each tennis ball at a maximum speed he can, the skateboard reaches the desired velocity with minimum tennis balls thrown. Same is true with the rocket engine. If the propellant's exhaust velocity is increased, lesser quantity of fuel would be needed. However, in a normal chemical propulsion rockets, the maximum exhaust velocity achieved is limited to 3 or 4 km per second. Since the velocity can't be increased anymore, the only way to lift a long-distance deep space mission or a heavy human spacecraft mission is by increasing the amount of propellant used. But this in turn increases the weight of spacecraft. Thus, to launch a heavier load or a long-distance mission, the percentage of weight of fuel to the weight of rocket increases exponentially. In fact, for deep space mission, almost 99% of weight of rocket is fuel. And very little room is there to carry scientific instruments. Wouldn't it be great if the propellant's exit velocity could be increased further? This is exactly what an electric propulsion is capable of. In next part, we would see a brief history of electric propulsion rockets and the working principle of Hall effect thrusters. What do you all think about this technology? Do let me know in comments. Alright viewers, thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe to my channel for more aerospace videos.